Thank you very much, uh, Tero, for the introduction and for having me in this seminar. I start my screen sharing. Let me see. Is it all right? Coming yes. through? Very good. So um, I will talk about uh, something that I am working on right now which makes it more exciting. Uh, also, uh, in, it means that I am really happy to hear uh, any feedback ideas that you might have. So, uh, does the Bible have a center? Uh, for example, uh, probably if we would ask Luther, he would point out that maybe Romans 1.17 is the center of the Bible. Uh, or maybe the Gospels, or maybe some ethical rules. So this is, of course, an age-old theological discussion. Uh, but uh, as theological as it might seem to be, uh, this is actually a central interest also of the digital humanities. So it is related to... Um, to finding the... Uh, keywords of a text and to the general issue of uh, distant reading. Uh, so what I do is I will uh, analyze a, a database of uh, biblical uh, uh, references across uh, the New and Old uh, uh, Testaments. And this uh, database comes from um, uh, the openbible.info website. It, it is uh, freely downloadable. It includes uh, 340,000 uh, cross-references that uh, identify shared uh, features, uh, commonalities between different parts of the Bible, chains of uh, similar themes, words, events, or people. Uh, the database draws on the works of uh, scholars uh, back in the 18th century. It has been a little bit uh, completed uh, since then, but the work of these uh, commentators in the 18th century itself is based on patristic medieval works. And so basically it's a kind of representative sample, I should say, of much of Western uh, biblical interpretation. So what did I do with this database? How did I go from database to network? Uh, obviously, as you have already learned, uh, a, a network is a is a is a mathematical object of uh, of uh, uh, nodes and links, right? Uh, of nodes or um, uh, are are the fundamental elements that are being uh, connected by uh, the in in the mathematical language they are called actually vertices, uh, which are connected by the links, which are in the mathematical language um, uh, are called the arcs. So to, to build this network, I, I took the verses of the Bible as the notes. Sometimes there are also ranges of verses and I connected them with those links or arcs. The way I connected them was uh, if in the database, a verse B is citing or it invokes uh, a verse A, then there is a directed link from verse B to verse A. And verse A uh, is the uh, passage or verse that is helpful in understanding verse B, okay? So, so the, the, the arrow points to the verse or text that is helpful in understanding our source, okay? And uh, it means that, of course, um, a range, 
uh, can include one or more um, uh, versus. And we will see later how this works. Okay, so this is, for example, the neighborhood of Romans 117. Okay, so if you take uh, Romans 117 and, and, um, and uh, add all those uh, links, as I just described, you get this uh, immediate neighborhood. So that's all the other verses of the Bible that within a distance of one uh, to Romans 117. And you should imagine this network going on and on and on and on uh, on a much, much larger scale. So this is some basic statistics. Uh, there are 444, above 444,000 uh, connections, links, or arcs in this network. There are almost uh, 30,000 source verses, so verses to be explained, and al almost uh, twice uh, more than uh, twice as many verses that help to explain them. So they are the verses to which the arrows are uh, directed. Uh, and you have, uh, as I said, verses and also of verses. I don't go into that, but overall, uh, the 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 network includes uh, more than thirty thousand verses of the Bible, uh, which is actually uh, surprisingly comprehensive. So these uh, commentators in the eighteenth century were doing a really good job. Uh, so this. Database includes uh, then uh, almost almost the uh, entire uh, Bible, uh, and I can't hear the verses in the New American Standard uh, version, which I, I use for automatic text uh, retrieval. But uh, this is about the number of verses in in in, in our modern Bibles. So uh, what I did with this network then to find the center of the Bible is I, I, I used two methods. Uh, first, I applied centrality measures to the network, which is uh, like I showed you before with the Romans 117, only much larger. So I asked about three kinds of centrality. Okay, th those, those measurements come basically from social network theory. So you can think about them uh, basically in, when, when you think about social network theory, you speak about the influence of an actor on the network and influence on an actor on, on his or her social networks, okay. And one of those measures is uh, degree centrality, uh, which in a social network means uh, how many friends uh, someone has. And in our uh, network, uh, our Bible verse network, uh, this translates into uh, which verse receives the most references. So I will look at the in-degree centrality. I, I, I have done all the statistics on all other aspects, but this seems to be an um, important measurement, right? So how, how many uh, other verses does this particular verse have to understand? Another uh, centrality measure is Page rank centrality. This is named after the Google co founder Larry Page. Uh, and this basically is, uh, means that you perform what is called a random walk on the network. And well, just basically imagine uh, walking across those links randomly <laughs> all over the network. And uh, page rank centrality measures uh, how frequently a random walker uh, passes through the node. Okay, and that's basically what there is uh, to uh, this page centrality measure. 
then there is between us centrality. This can be also perhaps understood more easily on a social network analogy. So this means uh, how important uh, I am as an individual in connecting different uh, friendship circles on the network. And the technical definition is the number of uh, shortest paths that cross through the nodes. So a shortest path from node A to node B um, is the one where you navigate an, a number of intermediate links or nodes. And of course, this can be done in many ways. I can reach another actor on, on my social networks uh, through many different connections, right? And the shortest way to do that is this shortest path. And if many of those shortest paths, uh, I am on many of those shortest paths in a social network, I, this means I have a high between the centrality. Okay, so what are the results from this first experiment? Uh, let's look at in degree centrality first. So these are the verses who receive the most links, the most incoming links, meaning that they are important in the uh, for the interpretation of, of the most verses, most other verses in the Bible. And we start with, and I'm not going to read out all of that, of course, but uh, 1 Peter um, uh, 2, 9 is the first one uh, about the Christ followers, the early church as being a chosen race uh, and so on. Uh, this is actually a well-known uh, Passage um, and so and another uh, well-known one about soteriology from from Titus two, uh, the Great Commission from Matthew twenty-eight. So they are, seem to be all well-known and important texts. Then there are two uh, texts from Revelation. So uh, this is a bit surprising. So out of the top five, there are two from. Revelation, and some more that I did not put on the on the slide. Second Corinthians, two from Isaiah, uh, three from Isaiah actually, and and one from uh, one from John. Okay, but let's go to the page rank centrality now. Again, uh, the top two in a different order, but the top two remain the same: uh, Titus two and one Peter two. And Matthew 28 is again important. Now, two texts from Revelation are included, and, and um, among them a new one. Um, and there is also a little change in, in the rest of the list. And uh, finally, between the centrality, again, uh, Titus 2 is on, on the top. and But here you have uh, one, two, three Old Testament Hebrew Bible uh, passages. Uh, they seem to have uh, to, to seem to do with uh, the the uh, uh, with uh, the dynasty of David and and of Judah and. Um, and the uh, among the rest of the list, you see one a text from uh, from Acts, and so this is a this is a little bit different uh, selection. Okay, I I will offer some short reflections on this, but let's go to the the second method now, uh, which involves the um, the. Uh, measurement of modularity. Okay, so within a network, there are nodes, there are individuals on a social network, right, who are mo more closely connected to each other than they are connected to the rest of the network. Okay, so this means basically uh, in a so on a social network, this would be friendship circles. Okay, so um, uh, friends spend more time with each other than they spend with with, with, with other people on the on the uh, on the social network. Um, there are many ways to measure modularity on the network, and this has been a really difficult task. I have experimented a lot with this because on this size of a network, I just had my laptop. <laughs> 
with me when I was doing this research. So of course you can uh, you can you can request computer time, and uh, every university has uh, big uh, uh, machines that can perform this very fast. But in order to make this doable at all on a laptop. Um, uh, I had to pick an algorithm that uh, that's, um, has the kind of you know computational features that make it doable. Uh, plus, um, um, I did not want to use a stochastic one. That's also another issue. So you can run modularity detection many times and get a different result. So I didn't want that either. I, I needed one that's applicable to directed networks, right? So the, the links have a direction. They point from, from B to A or from A to B uh, and so on. So this uh, actually narrowed down the options to this one particular um, um, algorithm that has been described, uh, published. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, pass on the reference if anyone is interested. And so this is uh, programmed into the iGraph network uh, package that I was using and so after the initial detection of the modules, I took this the I took each and every module again, and I subdivided them into submodules, and then the submodules again into further submodules. As long as the resulting module had a certain uh, value of modularity, I mean it 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 had to have this feature that I just explained that it's more connected. Uh, inside, so the members of the module are more connected to each other than they are connected to the rest of, of the world, the, the rest of the network. And this has been, of course, done with a lot of uh, code, and, and I, I did not do this, do this manually. This was, a, this was a lot of network uh, modularity detection. So uh, anyway, I share the <laughs> results with you. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so I was, I was then, I was then looking uh, for the connections between those final modules. Okay, and I will show an example. And I was interested in how those smallest units, which you can uh, consider as somehow thematic units of the Bible, how they interact with each other, how they are uh, interconnected. So I built a network again from those final modules. And I will show you how this looks like about. And then I was interested in the network centrality of those final modules. OK, so this is like one example. Uh, this is actually the, the, the top uh, ranking uh, module. So this is one of those modules that I received uh, Many thousands of <laughs> after 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 dividing the entire network into modules and then submodules and so on. So this is one of those smallest units around Re Revelation 19. So this is organized. This uh, representation is organized in a way that also shows the relative importance of those uh, uh, verses within this module. So the larger uh, Larger uh, label shows this, it's, and, and the and the larger node shows that it's a more more important uh, node element within this this module. Now this one is in the center now. Uh, can I use a pointer here? I'm not sure, but anyway, you can see in the very center you have uh, you have this you have this. I I, I did this um, this. Uh, uh, heat heat map, you know, algorithm just to highlight how how um, the neighborhood of this of this module looks like. Okay, so now all those nodes are not any longer individual verses. They are all uh, small modules, the size of three, five, ten verses each, and uh, then they are basically showing the connection between them uh, as dictated by the connections between their members. Okay, so the connections between those verses within the modules are now translate into connections within uh, two module. Okay, so that's the immediate neighborhood of this, uh, of this one module. And I mean, this is, you cannot really 
uh, if you put all the modules on one screen, you just don't, you just only see one black mass. It's, it's not really doable. Uh, you cannot really see too much just by visual inspection. And so that's why I, again, uh, ran uh, different algorithms on this network of the modules, okay? And um, then I picked the top five modules. So that are important uh, on this uh, network of modules, okay? And then uh, I ordered their members. So the, the verses included in the module, right? So for example, all those verses here, so Revelation 21, 8, 19, 20, and so on, I ordered them by their importance within the module again, and I use just page rank uh, for that. So this is module one. And as you see, this is almost all from Revelation and it's extremely apocalyptic, it's beasts, but then the rest is again, um, um, even when it's not uh, not uh, not from Revelation, it's, it's um, it's uh, the, 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 the beasts from Daniel and, and, uh, and well, it makes sense, of course, they are organized into one module because they are some way in some ways similar, right? So that's why the interpreters suggested that one of those verses helps to understand the other. Okay, that's, that's why they ended up in uh, one uh, module, which shows actually this, that this uh, module detection is you know, doing something meaningful for us. Okay, let's look at the second highest ranking module. Again, the, the, uh, the members of the module ordered by, by uh, page rank centrality. Uh, well, this one has uh, three verses from Jeremiah and uh, one from Revelation on the top. Um, and uh, again, this is fairly apocalyptic. It's more about uh, retribution, uh, punishment. Yeah. So the first one was about the, the, this image of the beast, and this is about about revenge and retribution and God's righteousness and judgment. That's what those, those verses are mostly about. Okay. So the the third uh, highest ranking module is something different now. And uh, this is um, uh, an ego Amy saying from, from, from John and um, a nice uh, soteriological uh, statement from First Peter and, and also uh, another uh, verse from, from John. So this is sort of a mixed bunch, uh, right? Uh, so what we can see now looking at both uh, experiments, yeah, so the centrality of verses and then the centrality of modules. We see that uh, there are lots of apocalyptic themes, uh, soteri uh, soteriological themes, as ec ecclesiological themes. Uh, uh, the New Testament is overrepresented, uh, whereas uh, the number of verses in the Old Testament are about three times uh, higher. Uh, first Peter is surprisingly uh, high ranking in, 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 in those experiments, uh, especially the first one, the, the centrality of the verses. So this is not something that in the biblical scholarship or in theology or in biblical theology would occupy an extremely significant place. I mean, it is important. It is I should say not the least significant or interesting writing in the New Testament, but it's not the first. If you ask about the center of the Bible, right? You don't really point to first Peter. Um, no, no authentic uh, Pauline letters uh, turned up in this entire uh, selection, at least on the very top of, of those lists. Uh, but uh, second Corinthians, for example, is represented uh, somewhat more down on the on the list. So I, I maybe I had one verse here, but in on, on those slides, if you look into the rest of the results, you see more from second Corinthians. Uh, 
surprisingly, revelation is, is, is central and important. And the uh, Gospel of John, uh, among all the Gospels, almost uh, from the entire New Testament, uh, in addition to Revelation. So it's a very strong Johannine emphasis there. I did not reflect much more on, on this, uh, but it seems quite interesting. Um, so if this really reflects the central interests of, uh, of uh, almost 2000 years of, um, of um, biblical interpretation, that's I think a quite remarkable uh, overall um, uh, impression that, that we received. Of course, this is a, a, a really just a very first, very tentative analysis. As I said, I'm, I'm just in the middle of this. And uh, of course, it would be uh, instead of just looking at uh, five or 10 top verses or modules, um, one should uh, run a kind of statistical uh, um, analysis of, uh, let's say, the top 1% of the verses. And one could look at, for example, the uh, occurrence of different biblical books. Uh, it remains a bit difficult, of course, to kind of look into the semantic um, uh, side. So it's much easier to do that if you if you just inspect the you know verses. So, but to of course to read uh, you know thousands of uh, lines and make a judgment based on that, it's 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 uh, then again brings in a lot of subjectivity. Um, as Ellie also referred to this, of course, networks themselves uh, can be used to uh, to to extract a meaning. So one could uh, one could do some kind of uh, semantic analysis based on the based on those co uh, occurrences. Um, another issue is that um, the way I looked at the modules uh, might might not be the best way. So. Um, so, um, um, for example, in the way I, I use the centrality measurements, the larger modules, uh, the, the ones that include more verses, tends to have higher centrality, which is not always the case, of course. I think my last example, the last module was a very small one and it had a huge uh, centrality importance. Uh, nevertheless, one could think about, and I have done that kind of measurements like normalizing and so on. It's, it's um, again, at, at that point, it becomes a matter of interpretation and choices. So even this is a very exact method in a sense, what you make of the results then is, uh, well, it's, it's loaded with, uh, with, 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 uh, with the interpretation of, of what the modules are, what they mean. Um, so instead of just taking what I did, uh, the resulting smallest modules and uh, connecting them into a big network, you could look at the nested hierarchy of the modules. So as I started to divide the, the entire Bible into modules and submodules, you, you can look at uh, different uh, topics and sub uh, topics and so on. And well, that, again, uh, requires a lot of manual work, actually going through all of them and looking at them, what, what, they, what they do and what they include. All right. Uh, and of course, one obvious uh, uh, context that I, that, I, that I relied on is that I took this particular database, which was largely based on the work of certain uh, commentators of a certain tradition of commentaries. Although, as I said, it, it can be seen that this is actually a, 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 a huge sample from, from at least Western uh, Bible interpretation. Uh, but this brings in, of course, the entire uh, hermeneutical issue, right, about how much we locate meaning in the text versus how much we locate meaning in the reader. Okay, so we can also say that, well, all that emphasis on different things that's 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 in the eye of the interpreter right so this could be as well called in a sense a, a, a not the center of the bible but the center of um, of uh, almost two, two, two millennia of western bi biblical um, uh, interpretation of course then the next issue is how 
what what else can we do, right? To to connect the verses. Um, I I did not speak uh, about the kind of background assumption and history behind this entire research, which is that how. Uh, cultural items are connected into networks. And this is based on uh, uh, the way genes behave in um, evolution. Okay, I cut out all that background, but it's all, um, this, this has been inspired by that kind of idea. So, so how, how do we build networks then? How, how, how do we find out how cultural items or the verses of, of the Bible uh, work in a in a in a uh, synergy, uh, and of course another way to do that is to is to look at shared words. And of course, I, I have uh, done um, work on um, uh, just uh, connecting co-occurring words, and uh, there are of course big difficulties there when you want to go to a text written in different languages. So one could opt just to work with the Septuagint or the Vulgate. Uh, yeah, but uh, that's um, that's um, that's another um, avenue to to uh, explore. So thank you, and I look forward to your uh, suggestions. Uh,